Hey, Steve here, and I thought I'd just record this quick video to show you how to save your images in sRGB color space, whether, uh, whether you use Photoshop or Lightroom. Because we always talk about how when we're uploading our images for viewing online, they should be in sRGB, not Profoto RGB or Adobe RGB. And without getting into the technical details of why and, uh, and the benefits of each one and what they give you, just know that it's pretty much universally recommended to use sRGB whenever you're putting your images online. So just a quick couple of walkthroughs, first in Photoshop and then I'll show you how to do it in Lightroom. So let's use this image as an example. And basically once you get to the end of your workflow and you've done all your editing and everything and you're still looking at your full size shot, you haven't done any resizing or anything like that. What I recommend is coming to the image um, menu and choosing duplicate. And what this does it uh, allows you to uh, to basically do all your resizing and sharpening and your color profile um, conversion without affecting your uh, your master copy so you know if this was me doing this for real i would create that duplicate there so we've got two images here identical now and then i would come back into the uh, the original save and close that as the master copy i'll do that now and then just carry on doing everything else in this copy here, which hasn't actually been saved yet. So I won't go through the resizing and sharpening, but what I'll do is just show you how to make sure you're using sRGB when you come to save your JPEG. So to do that, we just need to go to the edit menu and choose convert to profile. And we can see that the, uh, you know, I've been working on the image in Photoshop in Profoto RGB. And so that's the source. And the destination here, if we click this, we've got this massive menu here. We only really need to be concerned with two or three, um, pretty much. So sRGB here, that's the one that we want to pick. And then just click OK. And when I do that, you notice that it's going to flatten the image. So that's a really good reason for not doing this on your master copy, because obviously if you lose the layers, you can't go back and edit them later. So yeah, once you've resized and you've done that and you've converted your color profile, you can just go to the save menu and save it as a JPEG as you normally would. Now, just coming over into Lightroom, if we're going to do the same thing, maybe, uh, you know, if you prefer using Lightroom or if you don't use Photoshop and only use Lightroom, then there's just one option really that you have to be aware of when you're saving your image. So let's say that I'd processed this image only in Lightroom and, you know, forget Photoshop was part of the equation. And I'm ready to save it and export it. So I just right click and choose export and export and then in here you've got all these options um, but this is the one you need to look out for so color space here Profoto, Adobe or sRGB so just make sure you've got that one ticked and if you need to resize it at this stage for uh, you know for exporting then you can do that you can just tick the box and then that allows you to resize the image here. So if we use uh, this option here for the long edge and then we leave that set to 900, then it's going to save the JPEG. So the longest edge is 900 pixels long and it will work the rest out for the other dimension. Um, sharpening, you can do that here as well, but yeah, we won't go into that. And that's pretty much it. So you just hit export and then go and save your file in a folder or whatever ready for uploading. So it's quite a simple thing to do uh, right at the end of your workflow. But, you know, I just wanted to record this video just because it is really important when you're sharing your shots online or uploading them to any kind of, um, you know, Flickr, Facebook and all that stuff. Because if you get it wrong, if you use anything other than sRGB, then it, um, you know, you stand a really good chance of your image looking uh, a bit strange when other people see it or even when you see it in the browser. But anyway, that's pretty much all there is to it. So quite a short video. So I'll sign it off here and go and make a cup of tea. All right, I hope you enjoyed this short video tutorial. If you like shooting landscapes and you want to learn how to put all these individual tips and techniques that you're learning into a structured six step Photoshop workflow, then click the download button and I'll send you my free PDF cheat sheet that lays everything out for you step by step.